Hi, I'm Harold Anger from Spring Green Lawn Care, and I'm here today with Fred Whitford. Good morning, Hi, Fred. Harold. Good morning. Fred is with the uh, Purdue Extension Service, and we're going to talk today about safety when you're using a back rack, how to tie it down, some of the concerns about using this uh, system, and how to make sure that your equipment is tied down securely. So Fred, why don't you go ahead and start? You betcha. I guess we would start, Harold, by, you know, why are we using these, these objects? Well, you know, it makes it a whole lot easier instead of having to pull a trailer with water. In this case, in our truck here, we've got the water that we can actually fill up our ride-on spray, mm -hmm. spray or sprayer. Right. Um, it allows us to get rid of the trailer and allows us to focus on a much smaller piece behind us. Correct? Right. So a lot of benefits. It's become very popular in the last four or five years. Right. But as we have talked in earlier videos and we looked at weights, these here, uh, we found out, were, are built for about 1,500 pounds. Yes. We know that our sprayer is 1,000 pounds, time you add water plus or minus. So we know that this is actually going to be able to carry that plus some more. A lot of discussion here. First of all, when you put these on, uh, it's an issue by weight. Unless you got a forklift, but even that's hard enough. It's a three-person job. We want to be able to take our time, put it on, and make sure, obviously, we're back to the pin. So if somebody's helping you, and this is going to be in my truck, Harold, I want to make sure that I put that pin, I check for that pin, because if not, it's going to come out. Exactly. So uh, in a minute, we're going to drive this uh, sprayer spreader up on, the, on this rack here. And so people time down with different things. We would argue right off the bat that bungee cords is not what we want for these very expensive machines. Right. I would agree. All right. And so we want to stay away from the bungee cords. And so what you would like to do, that thing weighs a thousand pounds. I would like to have something that's a thousand pounds. Okay. And somebody's going to say, well, how do you know, Fred? Well, there's a tag. If you're lucky, you got the, the box here. Um, and if you noticed here on this box, Harold, how much is how much is ten thousand pounds there? And that's uh, breaking strength. Breaking thing, and then thirty three hundred, three thousand three hundred thirty three pounds is the working load. You want to use the working load, and and the reason for that is these things will wear and tear. You don't want to ever get to the breaking strength. Okay. So I've got a thousand pounds. This one is how much? 33, 33. So more, way, way, over. way, way over. over, but there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so Harold, uh, most of the time we don't have the package in. So what, what happens on these manufacturers are that they are going to give us the rating on here. Right. And so how and much says, is the working load? It says uh, the uh, working load limit is 3,333 pounds, which just is like what was on the package. Okay, right. which is good. Um, then Harold, we look here. And which, this would be a common, something common that we would use, Harold. Right. Um, a smaller strap. How much is it rated for? This is the working load limit of 400 pounds. Uh, 400 pounds. Now, it's probably too, Harold, that I could put this on it and 400 pounds would hold it. But I'm always sort of on the other end because of the strap. I would love to have one that's 1,000 pounds. Right. So to me, this would be short, though it would work. I would want one that's 1,000 that's a pounds. Now, there's a one last component of it, Harold, that we have here, and that's the quality of the quality of those straps. Do you see anything <laughs> wrong with this? Yes, they're frayed, it's it's ripped, it's falling apart. I've got my a <laughs> hole in it. Oh yeah. So obviously these are relatively cheap. Now, Harold, the, the issue here is many people decide they don't want to strap them down. Right. What happens if you're driving down the road and the car in front of you slams on their brakes? You're going to swerve around. You're going to swerve. And you got this machine in here that, in fact, you've got it pinched in, but you don't. And you have a little bit here. Uh, that thing could, in fact, topple over. Could. Yes. And it has happened. It has happened. And it has happened. So we would always like to strap these down. Mm -hmm. All right. So a couple of basic things. Uh, wrap up. Make sure you put your pin in and you check. Right. Make sure that this fits in very well. Make sure that you have a strap that's going to cover the weight. Right. And then make sure the strap is in good shape. That's correct. Let's, Let's go ahead the... and flip this up. So 
So now that everything's up, Fred, what's the last step we have to do? If I'm on the highway, Harold, I want to strap these down. Now, we can strap them down front to back, front to side to side, hook many them different ways. many different ways, and we'll leave that up to, to the folks that use them. The key thing here is to make sure that they're strapped down. Understand this is on the side of the road uh, 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 right next to somebody's house, right? Right. So we want to make sure that when we pull into it, right, common sense is that this gate should be facing the yards or yard the or property, that, right. the property that we're going to be doing, correct? Yes. We also have a cone. Sure. Uh, what would be a common sense? Not many people do it, but what's the common sense? Well, to put this here so people know that you've got this piece of equipment there, it's just a warning. It says, Fred, they're stopped. Right. And that's all we want people to know. Exactly. Exactly.